Now that's true teamwork. Herbie helping Lee not only with the microphone, but with the beer. <laughs> Welcome you to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Here in Manhattan, it's home to the only team in the Big 12 without a conference loss. Kansas State looking also to stay in the playoff contention. The Wildcats are 3-0 in league play. Three teams at 3-1. West Virginia, Oklahoma State play each other today on ESPN. And Texas 3-4 overall. Worst start since 1997. The Longhorns are playing better the last couple of weeks and look to pull the upset today. Kansas State won the toss and deferred, so Warwick and Bernard are deep for the Longhorns as K-State will kick it off. Wildcats coming off a win at Oklahoma last week. Their only loss here at home against Auburn on a Thursday night. And that will sail through the end zone and will come out to the 25 for Texas's offense. Hi, everybody. Alongside Brian Greasy, I'm Dave Pash. Tom Lugan built down on the field. Texas, Brian, looks like a different team the last couple of weeks, and that's because of their offense, and in particular, the quarterback, Tom Run Swoops. Yeah, the last two weeks, he's had over 800-plus yards of offense. They've started to get clicking. That's only been done twice before. Colt McCoy and Vince Young for the Texas Longhorns. They now have an identity on offense, and it's, it stems from Tyrone Swoops running the football with Malcolm Brown, Jonathan Gray, and then throwing the football off of play action to his his two playmakers, John Harris, the, the wide receiver, who's really come on this year, and we all knew about Jackson Shipley, so that balance has begun to, to emerge. They go with two tight ends on the opening play. Play action, swoops, trying to dump it off, and it was broken up by Randall Evans, incomplete. Take a look at our impact players. And we mentioned those two wide receivers. They've got to get them involved in the passing game. Shipley, more of a possession receiver. Harris has been really their big play guy all season and then on defense for Kansas State Jonathan Truman's their heart and soul as from the linebacker position the walk on captain and Danzel McDaniel is a new player this year a Juco transfer that has really started to make plays a very physical corner that'll come up and make plays in the running game. All right that player is brought to you by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. You know John Harris a guy that was overlooked and many thought he wouldn't make it at Texas but he's been their best receiver. Here's Malcolm Brown straight ahead. Brought down at the 30-yard line, so a gain of a handful. It'll bring up third down. Texas has been terrible on third downs this year, but with Swoops playing better and getting more confident, we'll see if he can make a play. Now, there is an injured Longhorn. And that's and Ken Perkins. Yeah, yeah, the right guard. They've had so many injuries, along with dismissals and suspensions on this team, that all of the starters for Texas are in single digits in terms of career starts. Yeah, and this is an injury that Texas just, just can't afford he is right here they just can't afford to have this kind of an injury on the offensive line he gets kind of crossed up there because as you mentioned they, they're without Kennedy Estelle their left tackle Desmond Harrison Dominic Espinosa their center is, was really the, the most experienced guy coming back Taylor Doyle was the right guard he had to move to center and that's what allowed Kent Perkins to get in the lineup so Certainly, this is not a good development for, for Texas and Charlie Strong right off the bat. And Brian, in talking with the coaches this week, they, they talked about how things are starting to come together. They feel like their offensive line was showing some good chemistry. They had a season high for yards last week against Iowa State with 512. And as we mentioned, all of their starters in the offensive line, single digits in terms of career starts, five different starting combinations up front this year. And so Cameron Hughes will come in the game. We'll see if Hughes slides to guard or if uh, he goes to right tackle and Darius James goes to guard. Yep, I think they're going to put James at guard and then Hughes will come in and play the right tackle position. His first start of his career was last week against Iowa State on the road. So a third down and five. We talked about how poor Texas has been on third down. Truman looks like he's coming. 21 in purple. And it was moving by the left tackle, and here comes a flag. He was watching Truman and came up out of his stance. Marcus Hutchins. So that'll make it third and ten. False start. Number 65. Five-yard penalty, third down. You know, playing on the road, you're going to have some noise, and you got to be able 
The timing there just a little bit off between the center. Normally that center in a silent count when you're on the road his head will come up and then the guards and tackles see his head come up and they know there's a one count before he's going to snap the ball. The timing just a little bit off. Swerves with time, going to throw it short to the running back, Jonathan Gray, and pushed out of bounds by Randall Evans around the 23-yard line, so actually lost yardage on that play, fourth down. So important for a, a young quarterback like Tyrone Swoops to get into a rhythm on the road, to come out three and out on their first uh, opportunity. Now you got to kick the ball to Jake Waters. And Tyler Lockett first. He is one of the best kick returners in the country. Already has a punt return for a score. Four career kick returns for touchdowns. Movement again by Texas. False start. Offense. Number 19. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Now you wonder how this will affect Charlie Strong's young team. You come out on the road. You're feeling good after a win last week against Iowa State. And then you have penalties and you go backwards. Yeah. I mean, three procedure penalties, not, not going to break your back, obviously, in the very beginning of the game, but not the way Charlie Strong wanted to start this game, especially against Kansas State, who's the least penalized team in the country. But an excellent punt. Lockett backed up to his 25-yard line. And Lockett up to the 31. 56-yard punt. Jake Waters will take the field shortly. Last week in the game in Norman, Waters was hurt on this play. A long run in the third quarter. You see him land on his right shoulder. We were told by Bill Snyder that he threw all week. He'll throw today. He left uh, that game for a little bit, then came back, led Kansas State to victory. We did see him take another shot late in the game, but fought through it. We'll see how effective he is throwing and also running. Yeah, and watching him in warm-ups down on the field, you know, he had some good zip on the ball, so looks like that four or five days off from throwing the football have helped him. So from the Kansas State 31. And Waters on the first play, throws to a wide open locket. And he gets drilled, but has the first down of the 42. That's the 36th catch for Lockett. Waters doesn't have gaudy numbers, only nine touchdown passes on the season. You see his career numbers, but to Waters played very well last week against Oklahoma. Two touchdowns passing, one rushing. You know, I, I don't care that the numbers aren't gaudy. I, I know Bill Snyder doesn't care. He cares about efficiency, and Jake Waters has been one of the most efficient quarterbacks in all of college football so far, and it's a big reason why they're in position now undefeated in the conference. He's become one of the darlings of college football with Kansas State only one loss. Waters going to hand it off here to Demarcus Robinson. Brought down at the 45-yard line by Ridgeway and Cedric Reed. All right, let's look at today's impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Let's go in the trenches. B.J. Finney, an all-conference center, captain on this team for Kansas State, one of the best centers in the Big 12, going up against two of the best defensive tackles in the Big 12. Malcolm Brown has simply gotten better every single game, and Hassan Ridgeway is really a rising star for this defense for Texas. See a four-man front for Texas. Saw a lot of three-man front last week against Iowa State. Robinson able to get the edge. Got the first down. Loose in the secondary and finally run out of play inside the 35 by Mikel Thompson. A gain of 13 on the play. Great block by the center. We just highlight him, B.J. Finney. He's right here. Take a look. He's going to lead out. On this sweep, both he and Stiver. So you get the center and guard out in the lead position there. And that's a great situation for Robinson to get extra yardage downfield. 23-yard run, check that, for Robinson. So they're at the Texas 32-yard line. Robinson again trying to find a hole. Grab from behind by Reed. And Able to push his way to the 26-yard line. So a gain of six yards on first down. Demarcus Robinson's play has been much better the last few weeks. 
He and Charles Jones split carries along with Waters. It's a great start for Kansas State. Everybody thinks they're going to come downhill at you with a power running game in between the tackles. And what do they do? First play, they throw the ball on the outside and run the sweep coming back. So they have Texas on their heels already. And the backfield right now in a three-point stance is uh, the youngest of the Gronk brothers, Glenn Gronkowski, with a touchdown catch last week. Robinson running again, not getting much there. Steve Edmond on the stop. So third down and about three coming up for Kansas State. And this is where it'll be interesting to me so far. Jake Waters has, has shown that he can throw the ball okay. The question is how much are they going to run him in this game with that shoulder and this is the situation third and three down in distance where he is so effective running the football. They need him to be able to do that in these kinds of situations. Yeah we talked about how poor Texas is on third down Kansas State outstanding on third down. Third and three for Waters and company. Texas looks like it's bringing pressure and it's Robinson with the first down to the 20 yard line. They got five yards before Jordan Hicks made the stop. Yeah, they're just reading the defensive tackle. It's a traditional zone read. You're going to see it. You're going to come right here, and they're going to option off of Ridgeway. They don't block him. You can't be right in that situation as a, as a defensive lineman. That's a very frustrating position to be in. You can't be right, and he gives the ball to Robinson for an easy first down. has thrown just the one pass otherwise we've seen run plays by the backs and we'll get one here with Jones and Jones able to break it to the outside a good pursuit by Thompson looked like Jones might get a big gain but Thompson able to get the angle and get him out of bounds after a four yard gain by the way Bill Snyder this week put on the College Football Hall of Fame ballot I would imagine that's a no brainer you can make the argument nobody's done a better job at any school in the country than Bill Snyder has and he's done it twice. There's no question that'll be a first ballot to entry and well deserved. Came back after uh, retiring and is the sixth year of his second stint as the head man here in Manhattan. Second down waters to throw end zone pass and incomplete and a flag comes in. Lockett trying to die for it. He got tied up in the end zone. Great awareness by Jake Waters knowing that he had Malcolm Brown offsides in the neutral zone take a shot downfield and maybe you get a touchdown throw and or you get a pass interference call. They will decline that offsides penalty and accept the pass interference. There are two fouls on the defense offsides defense number 90 that penalty is declined pass interference defense that penalty occurred at the one yard line. Number 21 committed the foul. By rule, the ball be placed at the two yard line, first and goal. Yeah, Duke Thomas, you see hand fighting with Lockett. Ball was in the air, that's interference. And so, first down and goal for Kansas State. Already four penalties by the Longhorns. Now they go out of the eye. Gronkowski is the up man. K State trying to score on its first possession. And here is Gronkowski got hit in the backfield by Malcolm Brown and then stood up at the line of scrimmage. The one advantage coming into this game that you look at Texas and say they may be able to control the line of scrimmage with their defensive line with Malcolm Brown with Hassan Ridgeway, Nashon Hughes, Cedric Reed, some of these guys. And so far we've seen Kansas State loosen them up with getting the ball in the perimeter. But down here inside the five yard line it's going to be tough just to push them off the ball. Well Jake Waters is coming out of the game with Charles Jones in at Wildcat quarterback. He has seven touchdowns from the Wildcat quarterback position and a timeout here. It's going to be on Kansas State. Second and goal for the Wildcats and we come back. Back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Dave Pash, Brian Gracie, Tom Luganville in Manhattan. Kansas State trying to keep Big 12 championship and playoff hopes alive. Got a big one here at home against the Texas team that is improving. But a good opening drive for K-State. And they've got a second and goal. Got water split wide and Charles Jones in as the Wildcat QB. 
Jones looking for a running lane. It's not there. First man through is Steve Edmond, knifing into the backfield. Takes him down for a loss. Third down and goal. Yeah, and Edmund was supposed to be blocked by the fullback, Gronkowski, and he just whiffed. Here he is right here, and he's going to come through the hole and just whiff on Edmund. Normally, Gronkowski, a very sure blocker, that time put his head down and missed the block. Edmund's ninth tackle for a loss on the season. Excellent player. Big guy, 6'2", 260. Actually weighs more than Gronkowski. Third down and goal for the four. Waters back in a quarterback. Curry Sexton in the slot is the man that's been. That's a run play to Jones, and he's brought down to the two-yard line. So it's fourth down, and here comes the field goal team. You surprised by that? No, not surprised. I am surprised that uh, Texas rises up there defensively. That was a very good stop inside the five-yard line. This Texas defense looked like they were on their heels with the first eight plays of that drive with the misdirection, but give them credit getting a stop inside the five. And these short field goals are, are not a sure thing. We, we've had games this year, the last two weeks, where we've seen someone miss a short one, and also McCrane doesn't have a lot of experience. Right off the bat, you're going to do that to the young kid. Only his fourth attempt. <laughs> he replaced Jack Cantelli, who missed three field goals in the Auburn game, including a short one. But he puts it through, and Kansas State has the early lead. Just stating facts. <laughs> He shut you up. <laughs> Congrats. Last week, have to do it again today, Dave. They, they kind of look Great. a little bit like the, the Tennessee uniforms they wore uh, last year in the Georgia game, don't they? Yeah, but that was gunmetal. That doesn't look like gunmetal to me. Not good. Got to be some, say. if you're an Illinois team, it has to be some orange somewhere on the uniform <laughs> somewhere. Or blue. <laughs> Might help. So Kansas State held to a field goal after a six minute, 13 second drive. Third down and goal from the four, they decided to run the football and Texas held up. This will be a touchback, went through the hands of Bernard. So it will come out to the 25 for Texas. Let's check in now with our national director of recruiting for ESPN, Tom Luganville. Well, guys, I've been evaluating Tyrone Swoop since his sophomore year in high school. And from his sophomore to his junior to his senior year, this is a player that has really struggled to develop as a quarterback, particularly in the passing game. And to put it bluntly, there were moments where he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. And I want to give some perspective to just how far along he has come under Coach Watson, the offensive coordinator, as well as Charlie Strong, in relationship to what he's been able to bring to the table for this passing game for Texas, particularly in the last two weeks. I'll have more after this play, Dave. All right, first down on the Texas 25 and swoops to the air. And a nice strong throw there to Jackson Shipley out of bounds at the 30 for a five-yard gain. No, there were moments as we were evaluating Tyrone Swoops, a wonderful athlete, big physical guy, kind of reminds you of Dak Prescott in terms of stature where we dropped him out of the ESPN 300. We changed his position to athlete because he wasn't showing progress. And even Charlie Strong went so far as to say in the spring this past year, they were concerned that he couldn't play quarterback and they might have to move him to another position. And that one behind the intended receiver, Marcus Johnson. There was some pressure in the backfield by Kansas State, forced an errant throw, so it's third down and five. Uh, you know, I think talking with Charlie Strong this week, I think the thing that stuck out to me, guys, is he said after that spring game, he went up to Tyrone Swoops. He said, listen, do you want to be the quarterback of Texas? Because he was under a lot of criticism after the spring game. And Tyrone Swoop says, absolutely, coach. And that's when this, his approach to the game and preparation began to change. And that's why this improvement has happened. Only a seventh career start. Incomplete, but again, pressure in the face of the quarterback. Yet both Jordan Willis and Ryan Mueller, the defensive ends, in the backfield. Mueller, an All-American a year ago, fourth down. And this is the kind of read that Tyrone Swoops needs to make to get a first down. You're going to get a little spot route here, and then in the this is where the football should go. You see, that's Johnson, the, the, the wide receiver. That ball is on time, on target, on his outside shoulder, and he can turn up and get a first down. But those are the kinds of on-time reads that Tyrone Swoops needs to continue to work on. Off the side of the foot of the punter, William Ross, and out of bounds around midfield. And the official actually in Texas territory still walking will stop at the 42. That's a 12-yard punt. Well, that won't help your quarterback either. 
or your defense. Kicking game. The kicking game is so important when you play on the road, especially against Kansas State, who's one of the best in all of college football in special teams. We saw it last week against Oklahoma, and right off the bat, William Russ shanks it out of bounds. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Dr. Pepper. Always one of a kind. Some shots of the new veneer football complex. The present facility will be torn down and rebuilt prior to next year. You saw the uh, locker room, the shot of the locker room that'll end up being more than twice the current size. That's where the veneer complex will be situated Kansas State won 81 percent of its home games under Bill Snyder at the stadium he built and the school he built his team with the short field first down at the Texas 42 and they'll keep it on the ground with Waters big hole and Waters hit out of bounds by Haynes at the 30 yard line that's a 12 yard pickup Well, we wondered when is he going to run the football and ideal situation pulls it. Obviously, that's a pull read for Jake Waters. He gets to the outside and, and good job. If I'm Jake Waters, I'm going to find the sideline as much as yes. I can today or get down on the ground. Oh, well, Haynes did a, get a little bit of a shot in on that shoulder. See how many he can take of those. First down of the Texas 30. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how Texas plays it. If they're going to play that zone, read, they're going to force Jake Waters to keep the ball. Here's Robinson. And good job getting positive yardage off that right side. Malcolm Brown on the stop. Texas looked like that had that play figured out, but Robinson able to get positive yardage, gain of three. But if I am Vance Bedford, defensive coordinator for Texas, I am going to I am going to take away the the running backs. I am going to force Jake Waters to run the ball for obvious reasons, and and then fill with my secondary and try to get a hit on the quarterback. Texas has an excellent defensive line. In fact, Bill Snyder said it's the best that they faced this year. Maybe the best that they'll face all season. On second and seven, Waters looking to throw and able to hit his tight end, Zach Trujillo. And it's only a game of three, though, so third down and four coming up for Kansas State. The last Wildcat drive stalled after they got a first and goal. They had to settle for three. On the last third down in three or four situation, they ran the zone read inside and didn't block Hassan Ridgeway and picked up an easy first down. We'll see if they again here in third and four situation choose to run the football with Robinson. They'll spread it out here. Three wide and third down and four. From the Texas 24 yard line. Waters getting a check from the sideline. Changing things up and the play clock was at one. He had to call a timeout. That's two already taken by Kansas State. Yeah, and you can see him. He's saying get the get the plays in faster. Get them in faster. When you huddle, you got to know that you don't have a whole lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Big one with the first college football playoff rankings due out Tuesday, 7.30 Eastern ESPN. Ole Miss and LSU tonight at 7.15 on ESPN. The Rebels unbeaten, ranked third in the AP poll. Hey, look at the play selection. You would assume they're trying to protect Jake Waters. He's run it once, thrown it twice. Kansas State has run 10 of its 13 plays in Texas territory, but... Just three points so far, third down and four. They took Robinson out of the game, Dave. That's Gronkowski, who's in the backfield, so it's either going to be a run by the quarterback or a pass. Texas blitzing. Waters pass caught by Lockett, but a great open field tackle. However, it looks like they're going to give him forward progress to the 20. Duke Thomas was right there to wrap him up, but it is a first down for Kansas State. Duke Thomas is, is a player that's really come on for Texas in the secondary. Great man-to-man -man cover corner. You see, he's not scared of Tyler Lockett going downfield, at least not yet anyway. He's all over him there, and you could argue that that spot was very favorable for Kansas State. Definitely close. Press set of downs for K-State. Robinson back on the field with Waters in the backfield. 
An eight-man box for Texas. Robinson busting it to the outside to the 15-yard line and finally run out of bounds by Thompson at the 12. It's an eight-yard gain. Duke Thomas had a chance to make a play at the point of attack and missed the tackle. Well, Jordan Hicks, the linebacker number three, right in the hole, and Duke Thomas both have a newfound respect for Demarcus Robinson. Great vision there to see that Thomas was out of position and lost contain and busted to the outside, bring up a, sh a second and short. Two yards to the line to gain at the 10. And they get Nemechek and Gronkowski in the backfield. Two fullbacks, and slinging it in there is Waters, but it's broken up by Quandre Diggs, intended for Lockett. So they had two tight ends back there. And, and it's all Waters. window dressing, Dave. You know, it's all window dressing. They want the linebackers, they want to, everybody on the defense to see this is a power run, and then they just slip that ball in behind. And Lockett just went unable to come up with that football. But here's the power run. Those linebackers have to respect that, and that's what opens the lane for the slant right behind. We saw it two times last week against Oklahoma. That's the first time we've seen it today. Good play by Diggs, a three-year starter at corner for Texas. Ten career interceptions, broke on that ball, made a play. Play clock down to two. They can't take another timeout. Here's Waters, and he's in trouble. He gets slammed to the ground at the 13-yard line, so they don't pick up third down, and it's fourth down here. And that's not what Bill Snyder wants right there. As you see, he takes a big shot. If you're going to run Jake Waters, do not run him in between the tackles. Take a look at this hit. Not only does he get hit by Hicks, but then he gets driven into the ground. And as a quarterback with a bum shoulder, that's, that's the worst position you can be in. If you're going to run Jake Waters in this game, run him off the zone read to the outside and perimeter where he can protect himself. A 30-yard try by McCrane, who is 4-4 on the year. And 2-2 two of two today, 6-0 Kansas State. Here's Reese in the studio. Taco Bell studio update again in the Big Ten. Nebraska taking on Rutgers is not all Amir Abdullah. Rutgers was looking for Amir. Instead, they get Tommy Armstrong busting into the corner. Of course, the Huskers' only loss on the road against Michigan State. Nebraska's on top, 7-0 in the first. Game's on ESPN2. Going to be interesting, Reese, to see how things play out in the Big Ten over the next few weeks. Ohio State playing great football. Can the Buckeyes run the table and get into the playoff conversation? They have Penn State tonight on ABC in Happy Valley. They have to go to Michigan State. The Spartans have Michigan today, 3.30 on ABC. You know, I'll give credit to JT Barrett, the quarterback for Ohio State. You know, that beginning of the year, they lost at home to Virginia Tech, and that was an attacking style of defense with Bud Foster. And Virginia Tech has looked really poor the last five, six weeks of the season. So that's going to be a bad loss for Ohio State. But JT Barrett has gotten better every single week. In the last three weeks, they scored 50-plus points. So Ohio State's definitely going to be in the mix. 6-0 Kansas State. Fair field goals by McCrane. Have another touchback. 25-yard line is where Texas will operate again. Here's Tom. Well, guys, one of the things with Tyrone Swoops, and you can see it in his body language, you can see it in his eyes, when he's confused or he's unsure, he wears it on his sleeve. And if you look at the last couple of series and you watch his eyes when the ball snapped, his eyes will come down to the rush. He's not working through progressions. He's not being decisive. Now, one of the reasons this offense has flourished the last two weeks is because they put Jonathan Gray and Malcolm Brown on the field at the same time. They've been in two tight end sets, and they've run Tyrone Swoops. They've got to get back to that mentality to settle him down. Only nine yards of offense, two, three and outs for Texas. Swoops will throw, and he has a completion to the 35-yard line as John Harris gets the first down, a gain of 11. The 41st catch for Harris. He had nine his first three years at Texas total. And a great play call by their offensive coordinator, Sean Watson, very one. This is a one man read. You either give the ball or throw the ball in the slot. The thing Texas needs, just get that first first down, which they did right there. Now you can get in a little bit of a rhythm. Yeah, they survived here despite bad special teams, bad offense, defense giving up a lot of yards, but not a lot of points. Run play. 
as Malcolm Brown tried the left side. Brought down at the 38-yard line by Jonathan Truman, Kansas State's leading tackler. Pickup of about three. But Tom is right. I think this, this offense has the most explosion when both Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray are in the game and your two wide receivers are John Harris and Jackson Shipley. And you have the element of misdirection, a little bit of ball handling in the backfield, and then play action to those two guys. But so far, we haven't seen those two backs in the game at the same time. Brown has come on of late, 150 yards total the last two games. Swoops on the roll up, downfield pass is caught by Shipley, but they're going to rule him out. Shipley saying, I got a foot down. Dante Barnett on the coverage. We'll see if they look at that a little bit longer. It was close. Well, this was a great throw. Let's give credit where credit is due to Tyrone Swoops, just a little bit too far outside. Jackson Shipley can be a little bit better with his awareness of where the sideline is and get those feet down. But there you see the skill level of Swoops. Can he do it consistently? Because that was a great pass. Third down and eight. Shipley, their leading receiver in terms of catches with 44. Here comes a delayed blitz, and the pass goes to Swain for the first down. He threw it over the head of the safety, Schellenberg who blitzed on the play. It's a first down. That was great design on this play. Swain blocked initially. That freed up Schellenberg to blitz, and then he released. Here's Swain right here. He's going to get the blitz, and then he's just going to release late. Very good design because Schellenberg's reading the block, and then he releases for the first down. That's Swain's seventh catch of the year. He started now 13 straight games. That's the longest streak for an offensive player for Texas. Here's Brown. And Brown gets sandwiched at the 46-yard line, a three-yard pickup. Denzel McDaniel is a great player for K-State. Along with DeCorey Johnson, we weren't sure. I checked that. And it's a Will Davis in on the stop with him as well. But DeCorey Johnson's been playing great. He had a great game against Auburn. He's really come on, and he's been a little bit injured. And so Will Davis is the guy that's going to have to fill in for him today. Second down and four. That swing shifting into the backfield. Play action. Swoops setting up. And along the sideline, it's incomplete. Unable to hang on to it was Harris. And that pass may be thrown a little bit too wide. Third down and four with a minute to go in the quarter. Well, John Harris has made a bunch of these plays, though, this year. He can make that play as a wide receiver. And you got a quarterback that's inexperienced, that's trying to get his rhythm and his confidence. These receivers can do a lot to help there, and certainly John Harris knows he could have made that play. And he's made that play the last yep. couple weeks. Had some big catches last week in the win against Iowa State. Third down's where Jackson Shipley comes into the game. Instead, it's a screen over the middle, and nothing there. That was Shipley. They tried to get the, the screen to him from the slot. He's such a good possession receiver, and he has such good quicks in the middle of the field, but that play just very well snuffed out by the Kansas State defense. Yeah, Will Geary, defensive lineman, was all over it, so Texas gets into K-State territory, but has to punt. See if uh, William Rush can give a better effort than the last one, 12 yards. Texas needs something good to happen, and a punt that would pin K-State deep would do it. And the fair catch made around the 17, probably not what Charlie Strong was hoping for. So 21 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. We check in with Reese Davis. Dave, I'm with Greece. The Illinois needs some orange on their uniforms. With these great ghosts deal, I mean, all of a sudden, Riley O'Toole's looking like Red Grange. He goes in, he's thrown for one, he's run for one. And Illinois is on top of Minnesota, 14-0 on ESPNU. Remember, Minnesota's unbeaten in Big Ten play fighting with Nebraska in the Big 12 West, but Rutgers' Gary Nova bought some time, finds Leonte Carew, and he's making a house call. And the State University of New Jersey has pulled even with the children of the corn, 7-7 on ESPN2 after one. All right, Reese, here at 6-zip, Kansas State. Had two good drives, but had to settle for field goals both times. And now the Wildcats with their worst starting field position on their 17-yard line. And Waters hits Curry Sexton. He's brought down to the 22-yard line by Michael Thompson. So a gain of a handful on first down. And that will likely be the end of the first quarter. 
So Texas with only 40 yards of offense. The That's defense the wasn't great, quarter. but able to hold Kansas State to a pair of field goals. K-State looks to go to 6-1 and one and stay unbeaten in Big 12 play. Texas trying to pull the upset. ESPN is your home of the new college football playoff. Celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed $3.6 million in scholarship funds. Don't expect to see snow cones in late October in Kansas. Those actually might melt. It's uh, 80 degrees here. It is warm, unseasonably warm. Rugabel needs some uh, suntan lotion down there. He already told me he might need a new shirt at halftime. <laughs> Second and six from the K-State 21. Waters hit and sack. It was Hassan Ridgeway with his fifth sack of the year. The coaches say he's been a big surprise this season. I was talking with Vance Bedford before the game, their, their uh, defensive coordinator, and he loves Hassan Ridgeway. He just says, you know, sometimes he's a very mild-mannered kid. He doesn't say a whole lot. Uh, he said if he ever gets to a point where he can channel his anger and take it out on the field, he would be very difficult to stop. 6'4", 300-pound sophomore. You see driving the quarterback waters to the ground 25 sacks now on the season in the top 10 nationally so a third down and 14 we'll see what they let waters do here he's only thrown the ball five times and he's in trouble and he's hit and brought down it's caleb blewett that gets to waters so he's taken several shots here now in the first half and they're gonna have to punt from their end zone that's a that's a big sack because he's lucky that he didn't wasn't a safety. He was very close to the to the goal line here and just holding on to the ball too long. You know that you're off rhythm. Throw the ball out of bounds. Don't take a sack backed up and make it difficult on your punter number one, but then also make it very difficult on your defense because Texas is going to get the ball in plus territory. Now the punter Nick Walsh was outstanding last week. Pinned Oklahoma inside the 10 a couple times. Got a big leg. Saw him in warmups last week. Booming 60 yarders like they were nothing. See how he does here. Backed up in his own end zone. And it's a short kick. Shipley. Fair catch made. Texas will have it inside the K-State 40. You know, last week, Texas used this formation. This is the diamond. You have both of your backs, Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray, on the field with Tyrone Swoops at the same time. It was very effective against Oklahoma. Take a look at these backs. Unselfish, making blocks downfield. Gray and Brown that frees up Tyrone Swoops. This is what we were talking about. Tom Luganville and I talking about getting both backs on the field at the same time with Tyrone Swoops. It's like having three running backs out there and you don't know which one's going to get the football. That might be something they go to later in this game. Well, they've only had three run plays so far here in the first half, all by Malcolm Brown. Jonathan Gray is now in the game and running back, but it Swoops on the carry. And swoops inside the 35. So hard to go. bring down a 240 pounds. And he gets about 12 and a first down. And the zone read is really what Sean Watson, their offensive coordinator, has hung his hat on that time. He just outruns Truman. Truman, the linebacker, he's got to adjust to the size and the speed of Tyrone Swoops. There you see Truman. Maybe you can't hang on that receiver as long as you'd like to with the speed of Tyrone Swoops to the edge. Joe Wickline and Sean Watson, the co-coordinators for Texas, as Gray gets the handoff to the 25, about three yards before Elijah Lee makes the hit. Well, see, guys, you see that diamond for formation right there, like Brian referenced. That time it was Swaim in the backfield along with Jonathan Gray. But when you get that set, you are a balanced set. There's no strength for the defense to be able to set their defense to. So you enter into the zone read, the quarterback power, true power blast very difficult to defend I think that's what Texas needs to stay in and play action too. Tom off of it they go one back here on second down they fake the pitch swoops in trouble but swoops takes off and gets yardage inside the 20 diving and has the first down to the 17 yard line 
Brian Mueller is an outstanding defensive end, but he's only 6'2", 245 pounds. Tyrone Swoops is bigger than Mueller, and that time he just shrugs him off, and the best attribute, at least right now, that Tyrone Swoops has are his legs, and on this drive, he's using them. We've seen a lot of big quarterbacks in the games we've covered this year that Prescott and Mississippi State Swoops might be bigger than him. He might be the biggest in college football. Yeah, Dak Prescott 6'2", 230, and this kid 6'4", 240. On first down, they run Gray, and Mueller drops him after a gain of about a yard. You know, Swoops, a guy that, as you saw his confidence build last week, you, you expect that to continue. The question is, again, can he be consistent? And maybe running the football here is going to help him in the passing game because he's seeing good things happen on the field. Well, in his defense, though, and I think people need to understand this, he's in a very difficult situation because this offensive line has been decimated. He has nobody up front that they anticipated coming in and playing this, this season up front, so he's under constant pressure. Yeah, Tim Perkins, who was hurt earlier, haven't seen him. Flag on the play as the pass was high. Intended for John Harris. Dante Barnett had coverage on the Texas wide receiver. There was pressure on the edge there. He had to get rid of that football quickly. By the way, Perkins is back in. Holding on Texas. Perkins was shaken up earlier. Holding. Offense, number 76, 10 yard penalty, second down. That's how I knew he was back in the game, Grace. He, he was holding. <laughs> well, that's not the way you want to state that you're back in the game and you're okay. Here he is right here. You're going to get a blitz. And I think both the right tackle, Hutchins and Perkins, got uh, got fooled. And did they get the wrong number there? It didn't look like uh, Perkins did much. Second down and 19. Four minutes into the second quarter. Swoops and a throw it deep and the pass underthrown incomplete and Shipley had a step on the defender ran the Levens but the pass was underthrown it's third down well he had him Randall Evans was beat if this ball is thrown to the back pylon instead of the front pylon that's a touchdown this is a play that they like they've run a switch release with Jackson Shipley and he had two steps on Randall Evans and that's a missed opportunity for Texas well, was that an interference? Did, did he hit Shipley in, in the face before the ball arrived or just good coverage? I think that was good coverage. Third down and 19. Swoops in trouble and can't do that. Now you're out of field goal range. Well, that's what happens with a quarterback in his seventh start. A bad decision there not to get rid of it. And it's fourth down, and they're going to have to punt the ball now. Well, they tried the same play. They had that third down conversion to Swaim on the delayed release. They try to run it again. He's right here, and he's going to block and then release. The problem is it was very well read by Elijah Lee. Right there, you see release? And now he's in between. There's nowhere to go, and Elijah Lee gets, gets to the quarterback. It was very well, great adjustment. You talk about Kansas State and them being so well coached. They get burned on the play on one drive. They come back and cover it the next. Excellent punt and lock it with a fair catch at the seven. Yeah, Kansas State, the epitome of when teams say that uh, they don't beat themselves, K-State does not. Yeah, and this, this, is, this is how it plays out right here. Nowhere to go with the football, and you knock them out of field goal range. Tonight on ABC, JT Barrett leads an explosive Ohio State offense against Penn State Saturday Night Football 8 Eastern 5 Pacific and ABC the Buckeyes rank 13th in the AP poll Kansas State is 11th as of Tuesday they'll still have the AP poll but on our graphics we'll be showing you the college football playoff rankings finally and uh, 730 Eastern ESPN on Tuesday the first rankings come out the committee meeting Monday and Tuesday down to 12 members now on the committee with Archie Manning unable to go because of health. As Waters tried to hit Sexton, the pass was low and in the dirt. Incomplete. Jake Waters has been sacked twice, been hit a couple other times. Well, and you see on that last throw, it's starting to affect him a little bit. The ball was low. He came into this game and Jake Waters didn't want to get hit. He's a little bit sore on that shoulder. But he's been hit numerous times, and you had to expect that. Texas coming in, as you said, Dave, 26 sacks on the year. And you got to protect number 15 if you're going to win this game for Kansas State. 
Texas number five in the country in pass defense. Bryce Petty was awful in the game against Texas's defense, even though the Bears won that game. Demarcus Robinson to the 10 yard line, so a short gain, third and long. Yeah, they've actually been better against passing teams like Baylor and you could say Oklahoma and, and Trevor Knight than they have against the running quarterbacks. Taysom Hill carved them up for three touchdowns on the ground and 41 points. And, and then last week, Sambi Richardson uh, had success throwing the football. They scored 38 points, uh, but they come up just short. So if Texas uh, can begin to stop these uh, mobile quarterbacks, they'll be a complete defense. Kansas State very good on third down, struggling though so far. Today, third and nine, Waters stepping up, looking to run, now pulls the trigger and throw it away. Deontay Burton was open. It's fourth down, and so Texas will get the ball back. Now you can see the frustration from Jake Waters. That's a play he normally makes. Extension, getting outside the pocket, and the threat of running and then pulling back and throwing to a wide receiver that ends up being open. But uh, Jake Waters just seems a little bit out of rhythm and probably a lot of it has to do with he's not feeling 100 percent. They're now two of six on third down. They have to kick it to Jackson Shipley who's a pretty good punt returner. And again punting out of the end zone is Walsh. This one a little bit better than the last one. And Shipley has to signal for the fair catch, and Texas will have it at its 45-yard line, down 6-0 here in the second quarter. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Synchrony Financial. Banking, loyalty, analytics. Engage with us. And Ford, beautiful things happen when you go further. A homecoming parade last night in Manhattan. You saw a shot of the Grand Marshals, Kevin Lockett and Aaron Lockett. Kevin is the father, Aaron the uncle of current Wildcat Tyler Lockett. Tyler is chasing his dad, Kevin, who holds all the receiving records in Kansas State history. Texas on first down, runs Malcolm Brown, and he gets about three yards to the 48-yard line. I, by the way, I, I think it's contractual that if you're named Lockett, you, you have to go to Kansas State. <laughs> They certainly have been the beneficiaries and great players over the years. It wasn't in the greasy contract that you had to go to Purdue, apparently. Uh, no. <laughs> Second and seven. Brown trying to pick a hole. He runs over. Dante Barnett gets only a couple yards, though, so third down and five. Get the sense Texas is close, or they can just make something happen offensively because they've done a good job on D. Yeah, well, if I'm Texas, I, I'm thinking about this situation starting to maybe take a shot downfield. Give John Harris, who's been such a great playmaker in one on one situations, a chance to go up and make a big play down the field. One of five on third down so far. Kansas State not much better, though. Swoops to the air. Looking downfield and nearly throws an interception off three K State players. Dante Barnett was the first man that deflected it, and it's fourth down. Well, Dante Barnett read that perfectly. He saw the tight end coming down the field. He'll be on the left side of your screen, number 22, and he just baits Tyrone Swoops to throw that football, but you got to finish the play, finish plays. That's what Bill Snyder talks about all the time, is you're in position, you have great recognition, an execution, but you just got to finish that play for Dante Barnett. Swoops is thrown for 27 yards after 321 last week. Nice punt. Almost sails into the stands on the fly. And they'll spot it at the 16-yard line, so it's been a rough first half for William Russ, the punter. Kansas State will have the ball again for just six points for the Wildcats. Try to stay unbeaten in conference play. And welcome back. Time for our Aflac trivia question. There are four head coaches of coach in a stadium named after him. I'll, I'll give you one. Okay, you want to guess? <laughs> Bill well, Snyder. Yeah. Hey, there's a lot of pressure after last week. You know, Mayday and Reese giving me a hard time on the Aflac. So we came up with one. I don't know if those guys back in the studio are going to be able to get that one. And both of you, I know you're listening, do not cheat. I guarantee you Reese has it already. No, he doesn't. Mayday is 
Right now on Twitter trying to find out. <laughs> Charles Jones wrapped up in the backfield of the 10, so a loss of five. Hassan Ridgeway makes another play, and right now Kansas State cannot block Ridgeway and Malcolm Brown. No, we were talking, and, and Tom Luganville down there is right behind the offense, and he was telling us, look at these two guys right up front. They're getting much too much push on this offensive line. They want to run the ball outside, but Ridgeway is just too fast. Look Kansas like State's going to have to change up their blocking schemes up front. All right, what happened there? B.J. Finney just looked like he walked right by him. They run it again, and nothing. Caleb blew it all over the back. Jones, so it brings up third and long. They were trying to get Finney to the outside to run the sweep. It has been successful so far, and I think they, they sense the fact they can't just come off the ball and push Texas and their defensive line off, so they got to go to the outside. The problem is when they pull and leave those guys free, they're too quick in the backfield. They can't get to the outside. Third down and 13, midway through the second quarter. See if Texas brings pressure here. You see Jordan Hicks standing up. I don't, think they, yeah, I don't think they, they need to bring pressure to get to the quarterback. They won't. They'll just rush four. Waters gets rid of it. And open is Sexton to make the grab and a first down at the 36-yard line. It's a 24-yard gain on third down and 13. Curry Sexton is just so reliable. 33 catches on the year coming in, and Jake Waters knows exactly where he's going to be. Look at the anticipation here. He leads him perfectly into the soft spot of the defense. And if you want to double Tyler Lockett on the outside, Curry Sexton's going to eat you alive in the middle. First down to the K-State 35. Ronkowski in the game. I'm going to run behind him, and Jones is free at the 45-yard line. First down to midfield. One of the best run plays of the day. 15 yards before Thompson and Haynes hit Charles Jones to the ground. Well, that time the offensive line just comes straight off. They don't pull anybody. Nice adjustment. Finney on Malcolm Brown. You got Stiverson on Ridgeway, and they give him a little bit of a crease. And Jones gets to the second level. Another run play. Jones trying to get outside, but too much speed for Texas. Here's Cedric Reed. Been quiet this year after 10 sacks a year ago. Only a sack and a half this year. Good job against the run there. A loss on the play. Yeah, I think, you know, Cedric Reed, he's, he struggled this year. There's no question about it. I, and I think a big part of it is last year he was primarily a pass rusher opposite Jackson Jeffco. Now he's got to be a full-time defensive end, a lot more on his plate. One yard setback, second down and long. Waters has thrown only eight passes. They've run the ball 20 times here in the first half. Waters to the air here and a strike. Beautiful throw. Just short of the marker is Tyler Lockett, so it'll bring up third down, but a great pass that time by Waters. Well, and a first down pass here, which is a great call. They've been running the ball now, and then you come back and you keep the defense off balance. Texas begins to stack the box, and you have man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and when you get when you get one-on-one -on -one with Tyler Lockett, you're going to take that slant route every time. It's third and one, though. See if they can pick it up here and move the chains. They're going Wildcat with Charles Jones. Waters is at the bottom of your screen as Jones able to get the first down. Boy, it looked initially like he might get tackled in the backfield, but he's able to move the sticks. Well, guys, this is the first time really in the second quarter here where Kansas State has been able to get ahead of the chains in terms of field position as the Kansas State defenders going down. They're now at the midfield, and all of a sudden, you're seeing the play calling start to open up. You're seeing a little bit more relaxing out of Kansas State's team. They were very tense. I was standing right behind them here when they were backed up in their own end zone. They looked like they just didn't have a good feel, and they felt like they were going backwards. Now things have opened up a little bit, and what you're starting to see is some confidence out of Jake Waters. And the other thing, too, with Texas, guys, real quick, when you start to see them collapse in the pocket and pass rush, more than likely it's out of their three-man front with 98 Hassan Ridgeway, and then, of course, with Malcolm Brown, number 90 because it creates one-on-one -on -one blocks because nobody's shaded. That's how they're getting pressure on the quarterback on third and long situations for Kansas State. And Tommy, you mentioned a Kansas State player down there. That's Charles Jones, and in particular in this game, that, that could be big as often as we've seen him touch the football here in the first half. Yeah, with the injury to Jake Waters, they've become reliant even more so. It looks like he just got twisted up, his knee on the ground there. But uh, they're going to need him 
and Demarcus Robinson in this game, especially in goal to go situations where they love to put him in the Wildcat. Eight carries apiece for Jones and Robinson. First down for Kansas State. Robinson off the right side able to push the pile to about the 35 so a three yard gain Peter Jenkins on the stop Kansas State had the ball for most of the first half but only six points to show for it they right now are doubling Texas up in time of possession they got man to man coverage on the outside with Sexton and Lockett whenever they want it and I don't blame Texas for stacking the box Stop the run. Play clock down at three. Waters passes high. It looked like Lockett, as he was being defended by Duke Thomas, was being held, and now a flag comes in. It looked like uh, the right arm of, of Lockett was being grabbed by Thomas who's already been flagged once for pass interference. Yeah that was a pretty easy call. Thomas got the uh, the hand and and was tugging on him. Pass interference. Defense number 21. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. Fifth penalty on Texas. Second on Duke Thomas for interference. Yep. Meanwhile, Kansas State, not surprisingly, no penalties. And that's just poor technique there by Duke Thomas being behind the receiver. Ball on the ground. Waters picks it up, and before he takes a shot from Jordan Hicks, he takes a seat. Down at the 33, it's a five-yard loss. And all these zone read situations, indecision will lead to a fumble. And right there, I think that Jake Waters wanted to keep that ball because you saw the defensive end Hughes Played down. That's a that's a pull read for the quarterback, and Jake Waters just had a little bit of an indecision that led to the fumble. Second down and 14. Texas bringing pressure here. Waters trying to set up the screen and complete over the head of Demarcus Robinson. So now it's third down and 14. They already picked up a third and 13 on this possession. Yeah, and this is if you get pressure and you run a screen, sometimes you have an opportunity for a great play. Robinson needs to get out a little bit faster. There's, that's a very difficult throw for a quarterback. If Robinson sees blitz and is on the same page with the quarterback and gets out fast, they might have had a big play there. This drive started inside the Kansas State 10 yard line. They've moved it to the 32 of Texas, but a third down and 14. Waters with time going deep and got a man. It's Lockett. He caught it. Inside the five, first and goal for K-State. And Duke Thomas is getting worn out over there by Tyler Lockett. You see a double move, the slant. It's great, great marriage of routes, right? They just hit a slant route, or they got a pass interference on Duke Thomas on the previous play. You come back with the slant and go, and Duke Thomas can't help himself, and Kansas State's in business inside the five. Their first and goal in the first quarter uh, and had to settle for a field goal. See if Texas's defense steps up. Robinson hit but keeps going and finds the end zone for a Kansas State touchdown. Wildcats have been plugging away all game and finally they hit pay dirt. an impressive drive 85 yards in 12 plays and we talked about it they were struggling to block the defensive line for Texas but they kept pounding that rock and loosen up a little bit with a few passes here and there and finally they get Robinson in the end zone fourth rushing touchdown for Demarcus Robinson on the season McCrane who has a pair of field goals so far on for the point after 13-0, Kansas State. And you set it up with the great slant and go to Tyler Lockett, your playmaker on offense. And then you get inside the five-yard line, and finally that offensive line gets enough push for Robinson to get in the end zone.
I'm Reese Davis. The Lexus Halftime Report is coming up. Nebraska showing why everybody in the Big Ten fears Amir. He's having a huge game against Rutgers. We'll show you the record that he has set or the place in the record book he has reached. Marcus Mariota, great night last night. Relived that and also it is a road test Saturday. As for that trivia question, Grease, you finally got me. I only know two of the three. Fortunately, Mark May all knows right. all the answers. He's right again. We'll see you at halftime. He's got them all three. <laughs> <laughs> Mayday got all three, but Reese didn't. Now that's an upset if I've ever if I've ever seen one. Well, here it is. Bill Snyder, one of four FBS head coaches to coach in a stadium named after him. The other three, Bear Bryant is the obvious one. As we look at our athletic trivia question, Ralph Jordan, Auburn, Lavelle Edwards, BYU. How many did you get right? That, that was for Reese and, and Mark. It wasn't for me. We pulled that one out of the archives. You got one out of the four, Bill Snyder. <laughs> Here's Amani Foreman on the return, and he's to the 25-yard line. 2-12 remaining. Texas has three timeouts left. There is a penalty marker down. Longhorns now down 13-0 to Kansas State. Texas, after putting up 48 points last week against Iowa State, shut out so far. During the return, holding, return team number seven. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. You roll this, guys, and take a look at the offensive line up front. You see they get pushed, Just freeze it right there. Look at that, all that push. There's no penetration, and that's what allows Robinson to get to the outside. They were giving up so much penetration early in that drive, and I think they wore down that defensive line for Texas and were able to finally punch it in the end zone. But great adjustment up front by that offensive line for Kansas State. Let's see if Texas can respond with all of its timeouts. They'll keep it on the ground here. Swoops, finds a running lane as he does a great job of keeping his balance. And it takes nine Kansas State players to finally get down the 245-pound quarterback. So that's a big gain, about 15. And that'll put the ball to 28 clock running. you got to get some kind of tempo, some kind of points on the board if you're Texas here in the final drive of the first half. Swoops looking downfield instead underneath. Caught by John Harris. Ball did not come out, able to secure it at the 40 yard line. So 12 yards at a first down. You got plenty of time here. Plenty of time. That was a good read there by Swoops. Gonna be a draw play. Gray taking it outside. And Gray close to midfield. Gain of about eight. Texas saving a timeout. 125 and counting here. Might have used the timeout there. Right. I can't take him to walk around. Second down and two. Oops, whoops, stumbled. And almost threw another interception to Dante Barnett. So it's incomplete. Third down. Same play that, that they just threw on the uh, first play of this drive, and Dante Barnett reads it again. And I, and I understand you're under a little bit of limitation if, if you're Sean Watson and the number of plays that you can run, okay, with a young quarterback. Yeah. You run that same play back to back, and a good safety or corner in the Big 12 is going to read it, and they're very lucky to get that ball back. Could run it here, third down and two. And they will, and it's a first down for Jonathan Gray to the 45-yard line. Gray, last year against Kansas State, had 141 yards rushing and two touchdowns. We've only seen him in limited snaps so far here in the first half. Timeout by Texas. They pass Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville at K-State. Texas in Wildcat territory with a minute to go and two timeouts. What do you expect here from them offensively? You know, I think sometimes you can use your weaknesses as strengths in situations like this. You ran that same play to John Harris. You completed it the first time. The second time, Dante Barnett should have picked it off. I would come back with the same play, same look if I'm, if I'm Texas, but I would run the double move with Harris and go right down the field and use Barnett's aggressiveness against him. Two catches, but... Went 24 yards for Harris. Swoops in trouble. Sacked by Mueller at the 47. Only had a sack and a half coming into today after 11 and a half last year. Former walk-on making a play. And 
Texas has to use another timeout. And he goes right around Cameron Hughes. Remember, Cameron Hughes was in there. They had some shuffling because Kent Perkins got hurt earlier in the game. Here he is right here, the matchup on Hughes. And Mueller just goes right around him. Just laid off the ball. And I mean, this is what I was talking about with, with Tyrone Swoops is he, he's in a very difficult situation because he doesn't have the kind of line that he needs to be able to sit back there and go through progressions and hit check downs and read defenses. So it's 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 hard for a young quarterback to, to, to get that out of his mind that he's going to be under fire uh, and be able to go through his progressions. But but everybody looks at it and says, oh, Tyrone Swoops can't read defenses. Right. Can't do this. Can't do that. You need help, too. Well, one of the uh, assistant coaches for Texas down on the field before the game said, really, right now, the problem is, is not Swoops. It, yeah. It's the offensive line. Absolutely. Second down and 18 at the Texas 47-yard line. Pressure again by Mueller. And Swoops throws incomplete for Shipley. But again, that play blown up from the beginning with Mueller getting into the backfield again. Now it's third and 18. Kansas State gets a stop. The Wildcats will get the ball back with some time and a timeout. Yeah. Well, in that time, the right guard, Perkins, got beat by Mueller. Anywhere they put Mueller in a passing situation, he can beat any one of these five offensive linemen for Texas. He's too quick and too experienced to keep him out of the backfield. Swoops stepping up, slinging it deep, broken up. Barnett made the play on Shipley right at the first down marker. Dante Barnett having himself a half or down. Barnett has been all over these wide receivers. He's playing downhill as a safety. You read that in cut. And you break on that ball, the biggest thing you have in your mind is don't get there too soon. He times it perfectly. I think Shipley could have made that play if he extended his arms rather than let the ball get into his body. But a great play by Barnett. You have McDaniel, Barnett, Burns, Evans. Pretty good secondary for Kansas State. As that punt goes into the end zone. Boy, it took a while for Texas to get down there. Dylan Haynes was chasing after it, but it's a touchback. Monday Night Football on ESPN. Deshaun Jackson, Colt McCoy, and the Washington Redskins in Dallas to face Tony Romo and the 6-1 and one Cowboys. No other night is Monday night as McCoy returns to the state of Texas. He won 45 games as the quarterback of the Longhorns led them to the national championship game. And with Kirk Cousins' bench last week came in, played well, and he'll get the start on Monday night. And he's he's one of the only other two quarterbacks that have had back to back games with the kind of production that Tyrone Swoops has had in the last two against Oklahoma and Iowa State Cole McCoy and then Vince Young uh, as well. But uh, so far in this game Texas has total less than 100 yards on the offensive side. Jake Waters takes a knee and that's the end of the first half. Kansas State. With 43 straight wins when leading at half. That's the second longest streak in college football behind Oklahoma. And Kansas State will get the ball to start the second half. Longhorns at 48 points last week. Nothing so far in the first half, but give K-State a lot of credit. Got pressure on swoops. And kept the Longhorns out of the end zone. Check in with Tom standing by with Charlie Strong. Coach, you guys settled down after some penalties in the first quarter, played good defense, and then give up the big play on the sluggo there. What did you say to Duke Thomas when he came out the field? Well, he got to keep his eyes on the receiver, and he looked at his eyes went to the backfield, and we know 16, he's a target, and he's always going to be a target for him. But we got to make a play there. That's third down. We'll give up the big third down before that one, but we got to get off the field on third down. Offensively, you guys seem so close. You seem like you're a play away. What type of adjustment do you need to make in the locker room here to try and get some explosive plays? We just got to settle down and make those plays. You know, they're, they're for us to be made, and we're just not making them right now. All right, good luck, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, Tommy. So 13-0 Kansas State leads Texas at halftime as we send you to Reese, Lou, and Mark in the studio for the Lexus Halftime Report. Bill Snyder didn't just build the stadium. He built the entire area. <laughs> Bill Snyder Highway. A journey to the next great championship in sports. ESPN, home of the new college football playoff. 
New Year's will never be the same. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Kansas State at 5-1 and 3-0 and and oh in conference play. The only unbeaten team in league play left in the Big 12. 13-0 over Texas as we get ready to start the third quarter. A week after putting up 48 points against Iowa State, Texas shut out and only 92 yards of total offense. Punted on all six possessions. It's the first time in at least 10 years Texas punted on all of its possessions of the first half. They didn't track it any further than 10 years ago. All in all, bad offense by Texas. Uh, does that surprise you? I know you're not surprised by Kansas State and what we well, saw from them. I think I think the takeaway from the first half is Kansas State's pretty good on defense. They might not look that way getting off the bus. They don't have a bunch of big guys up front, but they are disciplined. We knew that about Bill Snyder and this team. On the defensive side, they have been one step ahead of Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator for Texas. It's been a little bit too predictable for Texas, especially in the passing game with Tyrone Swoops. I think they need to get back to the running game with Jonathan Gray, Malcolm Brown, and get Tyrone Soup some more rushes. Now their defense has kept them in the game, holding Kansas State to a field goal on a couple of possessions. We'll see if their offense can do anything, but defense on the field first. Check in with Tom. Well, Jake Waters coming out of the locker room. One of the things that I've noticed with him at the quarterback position in the first half is how cautious he's been. He's been cautious with his run style, so much so that even the little things, something as, as simple as going down to the ground and getting helped up by your teammate, you're doing it with your left arm as opposed to your right injured arm. He's been very, very careful, has taken calculated risks in the run game, has been very, very good in making sure he doesn't subject himself to direct shots or going down hard on the right shoulder. They have to have him in this game to win this game. He's the key on offense. And officially, uh, Jake Waters with negative 11 rushing yards. You see 7 of 11 passing. For only 23 passes uh, at Oklahoma last week. So he's actually on pace to do what he did last week. They'll run it on first down to Demarcus Robinson. That's his 11th attempt here. And he picks up only a couple yards. Well, and I think the game plan in the second half for Kansas State on the offensive side is to continue to burn some of this clock. Almost a two to one advantage in the first half for Kansas State. Protect Jake Waters. This is not about a beauty contest in this game for Bill Snyder. He wants to get out of here with a W with a healthy quarterback. And that's the only two goals he had. Second down and eight. Little option. And the pitch to Robinson, and he's cut down at the 25-yard line. Steve Edmond made the play. Well, think about Kansas State's schedule coming up. They got Oklahoma State at home. They have to go to TCU. They're at West Virginia and at Baylor, all in a, a four-week span. You'd have to think at this point that you're going to have a, a one-loss team at best. When the Big 12 can't imagine Kansas State beating all those teams on the road. Yeah, right? well, and especially if, if Jake Waters is not 100%, but, you know, this is, uh, he's got this one on his plate right now in the second. He's got to win this one first, and then Oklahoma State who's, could be dangerous. Waters up third down and long, and somehow, uh, wide open is Cody Cook, and he gets the first down. Not only was he open, but then a missed tackle, and he's out near the 44 yard line. That's a good read check down for Cody Cook. Wanted to throw the ball down the field to lock it, but he got jammed up. Nobody there, so just throw it out to the flare. And Cody Cook, the former quarterback, with a nice move to get a first down. Eighth catch of the year for Cody Cook, junior. Jake Waters, a junior college transfer in a senior season. He is number one in school history in pass efficiency rating. And he almost was not the Kansas State quarterback this year and last year. More than that after this play as Robinson is brought down after a gain of two. The quarterback that a lot of people thought Kansas State had its sights on was Nick Marshall, who went to junior college here in Kansas. And it really came down to those two guys. And Marshall eventually chose Auburn and 
Kansas State ended up with Jake Waters. Well, they ended up with Jake Waters, and he had to split time last year with Daniel Sams, and uh, eventually he won out towards the end of the year, and now Daniel Sams is transferred to uh, McNeese State. And they almost pulled off a big upset against Nebraska earlier this year. Marshall, of course, uh, now at Auburn as Waters has time, but everybody covered. Flag down. Waters going deep, and the pass is right on target. First down, lock it inside the 10 yard line. Again, a penalty marker down. It's going to be a hold on Kansas State. And wipes out a great pass. Penalty flag on the play. Holding. Offense. Number 65. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. Great tackle. First penalty by K State today. Yeah, and you don't see this typically. It's Klein Sorge. Here he is right here on the right side. And you extend the play, you have this much time. He's working against Cedric Reed. He gets that right hand out there. And when you're right next to the quarterback, that referee is looking right at the quarterback, and that's hard not to not to see that penalty. It's amazing. Only 23 penalties, 192 penalty yards. They've only turned it over six times this year. They do not beat themselves. It's trite but true, certainly with Kansas State. That's how Bill Snyder's built this program. Waters in trouble, eludes pressure, and throws complete to Burton. He stood up at the 45-yard line. And so it'll bring up third down, and this is a little bit more manageable after that nice pass by Waters, third and eight. And this is what Charlie Strong was talking about going into the locker room. They've got to get off the field on third down. It's Kansas State five of nine in the first half. That is way too much. You've got to get some pressure on the quarterback. And they don't hear, and Waters flips it downfield where it is incomplete. Nearly picked off on the pass intended for Cook. Jason Hall, who missed last week the penalty due to an injury, made the play, but a penalty on Texas. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 40, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And Nashawn Hughes with a penalty you just can't commit on third down and long, can't do it. Wow, we're talking about getting off the field. Here he is right here. Take a look. Does he get his hands up around the face mask? Yep. He does. You got to let go in that instance. And you know, as a defender, you know when that hand goes up. You just got to let go, and they won't call that. So instead of a punt, Kansas State converts again on third down and long. They've done it all day. Robinson can't get away. Oh, he did. He somehow slipped out of the tackle of Reed. And scoots out of bounds. He was not going to be tackled on that play. He even stiff armed Click Caleb Blewett on the way to the sideline and he still lost yardage, y'all. Now well, take a look at Jake Waters here. He thought about getting a block for his running back. And then said, Whoa, that's Malcolm Brown. I don't want to touch him. <laughs> that was a good business decision. Yeah, right. <laughs> so a six yard loss, second down and 16. If Kansas State scores a touchdown, yeah, but then Texas is in big trouble. The way the Longhorns' offenses look so far, and the way K-State has dominated time of possession, Texas had it for less than 11 minutes in the first half. Waters fires high. He was trying to hit Lockett with a pass upstairs. Another third down and long, but where Kansas State has had most of its success today in these third and nearly impossible situation. Well, and if Texas gives up a conversion here, I think Charlie Strong might blow a gasket on the sideline <laughs> with the first half the way it went and then a penalty. He felt like he was going to get off the off the field on the last third down and then a, a penalty kept him on the field. And it's a wide receiver screen and Texas reads it well. Sexton brought down at the 41, so it's fourth and about 10. Tackle made by Jason Hall. Good looking freshman for Charlie Strong, who's in his first year with the program, coming over from Louisville. Will he, where he built that program back up. They were in real trouble after having success under Bobby Petrino, but he made them into a great defense and turned out a pretty good quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. He did, and it's, it's a little bit of a different situation now. We were talking with him a little bit about going from Teddy Bridgewater to Tyrone Swoops, a guy that really understands the game and played the quarterback position so well to a guy that's just just getting his feet wet, really. And the fair catch made by Shipley just outside the 10 yard line. Texas offense on the field trailing 13 to nothing early in the third.
tonight on ESPN. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Third rank Ole Miss led by quarterback Bo Wallace. Played great in the fourth quarter to beat Alabama. Can he take down LSU in Baton Rouge? 7-15 tonight on ESPN. Here in Manhattan, Kansas State, 11th in the country with a 13-0 lead over Texas, which is 3-4 for the first time since 1997. Longhorns trying to get something going on offense. They run Malcolm Brown off the right side. He picks up about three. Travis Britz on the stop. Texas has really struggled in the third quarter, to say the least. Look at their third down conversion percentage, 12. In the uh, third quarter, they've been outscored by 35 points. On the challenge for Joe Wickline and Sean Watson, their offensive co-offensive coordinator, says, how do you find some production in the offense with an offensive line that you really can't trust? And so they've got to really do it with smoke and mirrors in the second half. Another run play. It's the freshman Deontay Foreman. He's got the first down. Deontay Foreman with limited action this year gets a big play. Well, Tyrone Swoops and this offensive line, the combination of the two, they're not productive enough or experienced enough to handle the straight drop back passing game. That's where we've seen them get into trouble. Where we are seeing some success is with them doing what we're seeing right now. Two backs in the backfield, diamond formation, running the football effectively, taking off some of the pressure from Tyrone Swoops, and then hopefully taking advantage of some, some throws down the middle to create some explosive plays of 15 or more yards, which they have not had, but I like the approach early so far for Tyrone Swoops here. Well, they just had a 16-run run time, so that is uh, the first big play, if you will. Swain collides with Morgan Burns, and so that's a gain of about 5 to the 40, 36-yard uh, line. It's difficult for any offense to go 10, 12, 15 play drives without making some kind of mistake, penalty, you know, turnover. They need some more explosive plays. That's what's missing in this attack. And really, their guy that's been the explosive player has been John Harris. He's been the only one, and so they've got to figure out a way to get him the ball, number nine, right there in the slot. They had so many of them last week against Iowa State. Granted, the competition was different. Here's Foreman again, driven to the ground at the 39-yard line. Brought down by Valentino Coleman. So true freshman Deontay Foreman, 6'2", 215. Really hadn't seen him on offense uh, this year, but get a chance here in the third quarter. Third down and three for Texas. Maybe there's, there's no shortage of backs. You know, they ran off Joe Bergeron, but they got plenty of backs in the backfield. Expect them to run it here on third and two. There's a diamond formation, third down and three. So a lot of options for the quarterback, Tyrone Swoops. Play action pass. Swoops setting up and throws in the traffic. A beautiful catch made. John Harris helping his quarterback up high for the grab to the 43-yard line. There he is. He's the playmaker, and he's got the size at 6'2", 218 pounds. He lost some weight in the offseason. Coaches wanted him to shed some weight, but he has not lost that aggressive nature to the ball. He's a violent player at the wide receiver position, and that's something Charlie Strong was telling us about, that he's so competitive and so physical up to the ball that Tyrone Swoops trusts him to go up and make a play. He was an afterthought when this staff took over with just nine catches throughout his career. He talked about the weight loss. He's become a, a big-time player in the conference. And they try to reverse the ball on the ground, and Kansas State has it. So the true freshman, Deontay Foreman, who again has not seen a lot of action, tried to pitch it. It wasn't good, and Coleman recovers for the first turnover of the game. I understand the play call. I'm just not sure why you would have the true freshman the one with doing the exchange with Jackson Shipley. Right. Shipley's going to come back in motion. Why not have Malcolm Brown or Jonathan Gray, one of your more senior players, with this exchange? But just a miscommunication, and those are the kinds of mistakes that Kansas State waits for you to make. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Chevrolet, find new roads, and Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Big mistake here on the exchange. Look at Jackson Shipley's arms here. When your arms are like that in a pocket, you're expecting a handoff, not a pitch, but there's a pitch from the running back and there's just miscommunication there 
that ends up costing Texas. But that was pretty clear to me that Jackson Shipley was expecting a handoff and not that pitch from the running back. Well, you wonder how much they've run that in practice with the true freshman Deontay Foreman doing the, uh, the handing off. That's the ninth lost fumble by Texas in eight games. And they had a good drive going. So now Waters back to the air, fires to lock it into Texas territory. Now Lockett, very shifty once he gets his hands on the football. That's why he's been such a good return man. Senior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, against Texas last year, set the school record for 237 receiving yards, and then he broke it against Oklahoma with 278. Now he's the kind of player that can just go off at any moment in a game. Got to know where he is on every play. Top of your screen here on second down and six. Waters looking for him. Instead comes the other way. And a beautiful pass by Waters. Great job by Burton to get his foot down to make the catch inside the 40-yard line. And that's all Jake Waters. I wanted to throw the ball to the field on a three-wide receiver set. There's nobody there. Give credit to the offensive line. He has time to come all the way back to the other side. That's maybe the fourth or fifth read in the progression for Jake Waters. And nice job of tippy-tap by Deontay Burton. Or the 18th pass thrown by Waters, 130 yards now through the air. They're inside the Texas 40 again. Longhorns bring five, and Waters finds a running lane at the 35. And run out of play near the first down, stepped out just short. But we're seeing here uh, on this possession why uh, Jake Waters is becoming one of the darlings at college football, playing through that right shoulder injury, throwing and running. Uh, I don't know how you can't like 15 here. I mean, he, he's just, he's a, he's a baller. He's a gamer. He loves to play the game of football. He's taken a circuitous path to get here, and now he's taken the most of his opportunity to play for these Wildcats. And again, efficiency, that's the word that comes to mind. It's not going to blow you away with his speed or his arm, but he's making the right checks and he's being efficient. Got a penalty marker down. There's movement. And again, rare for Kansas State to make that kind of mistake. Second penalty. False start. Offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty, second down. And Zach Trujillo, you know, we talked for Bill Snyder's team about Jake Waters and battling Nick Marshall uh, to come to Kansas State. Uh, it's about junior college transfers. It's about walk-ons. That's how Bill Snyder has built this program. Think about it, if they win today, it's it's number 500 for the program. They had 300 until 1989. The last 25 years, they've won 200 games with a lot of walk-ons and JUCOs. 32 combined of the two deep for this game. You know what happens when you have those guys? They're hungry, they're all hungry. Waters in trouble, gets rid of it, and incomplete, it was dropped by Burton. Another good pass by Waters with uh, Malcolm Brown beating down on him. and. His guy could not make a play for him, so brings up third and six. Well, and this has been the thing with Deontay Burton is he's got talent, he's got speed, but can he continue to focus on every single play and make every play that comes his way? It's the consistency that they're looking for from Burton. Maybe the biggest play of the game right now for Texas. Needing to get a stop after that turnover. Third down and six. And where is Cedric Reed? Waters pass is caught by Sexton right at the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. Between the 30 and the 29, he's short. It's fourth down. You would think Kansas State would go for it, though. Good defense, Quandre Diggs. Great job on the switch route there. He's the one that gets him on the ground. Such an experienced player Diggs is. But now, fourth and short, you have got to be ready. Follow Gronkowski, the fullback. That's where the football is going to go. Robinson is the tailback. Fourth down and a yard. It's Waters, and he plows to the first down marker, appears to have it. Tevin Jackson made the tackle, but it is a first down. And again, with that bad shoulder, give Waters credit there for being tough on that quarterback sneak against those 300 pounders inside. I can promise you, every hit that he takes hurts even more than it normally would because. You know, that shoulder injury, every time you touch that thing, it hurts. When you get hit with a helmet on your pads, uh, it can be excruciating. They are going to review this further to see if Waters indeed got the first down. 
Again, four and a half remaining in the third. Only a two possession game, but and Texas unable to do anything offensively. Yeah, to get to the to over the 29 yard line. Now you can't tell there. And the problem is if you can't see the ball, there's no way they can overturn the ruling of the field. Let's see if this gives us a better look. You still really can't see the ball, but I don't, I don't think this is getting overturned. No. But you're right, Texas here, this is, it's got the feeling that they have got to get a stop here. You know, that's going to be a first down, but if they give up more points here, their offense is struggling. After further review, the ruling on the field stands first down. So a ball on the 29-yard line as Kansas State continues to take time off the clock, 27 to 13 in terms of time of possession. Doubling Texas up, and just wonder if uh, the Longhorns have enough possessions of Kansas State scores to come back from down three scores. They've run 15 more plays than Texas. The Longhorns' D, though, has been solid despite being on the field all day. Can they get another stop? <laughs> This is the element of Jake Waters game. I think that's progressed most from last year is coming up and checking the ball at the line of scrimmage. Ton of time for Waters surveying the field not rolling out. There's a flag down. Waters throws to the end zone and it's caught. Sexton was out of the end zone when he caught it. It's a first and goal. Let's see what the penalty flag is for though. Still what a great play by Waters and Sexton to come back to the ball. Holding offense number 55. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. And so that's three penalties for Kansas State, two on this drive. And you wonder, does that shoulder really hurt that much? Because no, that was on that. zip on that ball. Not on that. That's Cody White here, number 55. He's got that hand out there. Now he's got the, the choke hold. Out. But, <laughs> but that's this a was, black. That was, this, don't take away, this was an amazing play by Jake Waters and Cody Sexton. Look at Sexton come back down. He's got trust throwing that ball and he fights back to get that football. Curry Sexton, you can tell that there's a tr level of trust between Jake Waters and Sexton that doesn't typically happen. They're, they're roommates and they live together and they're on the same page on every scenario during the game. And it started with the Auburn game when Sexton had 11 catches. Senior from Abilene, Kansas. Waters throws low, incomplete. Lockett, the intended receiver. They needed someone other than Lockett to help Waters, and Sexton has stepped up this year. Well, those two guys making plays on the outside, and then you sprinkle in a little bit of Gronkowski. You know, he's making some plays, caught a touchdown, big touchdown uh, a week ago against Oklahoma to, to, to open the scoring. That's enough. I mean, those three guys and the production from those three guys, in addition to the running backs on the ground, is enough for this Kansas State offense. Meanwhile, Texas has held Kansas State to two yards per carry. And they'll throw it. Waters in trouble. Gets out of there again and throws it away. It was uh, Cedric Reed who was in the backfield. So it's third down and 20. And a must-stop situation for Texas now. Kansas State has been pretty good on third down and long. Got first down via Texas penalty earlier this quarter. Kansas State, if you're Jake Waters, you, know, you have an opportunity inside the five-yard line, and you've got to come back and be disciplined, not force the football down the field in third and 20 here if you smart with the ball. They'll roll him to the left. Waters looking back to this side of the field, and wide open is Burton fighting for yardage out of bounds short of the marker at the 21. Fourth down and two. What do you do? Well, they went for it about three minutes ago with about 15 yards further back. I don't see any reason why the decision would be different here. Now, they're not very com comfortable or confident at this point uh, in their kicking situation, Bill Snyder is. Obviously, Jack Cantelli, who started the year as a kicker, has been replaced with Matt McCrane, who, quite frankly, has not looked strong as you would like your kicker to. They have to call a timeout here. Play clock is down to three, and they will. We'll see if uh, Bill Snyder changes his mind. 
Fourth down and two when we return. Bruins. <laughs> All right, race 13 zip here. Kansas State on top, and Bill Snyder has changed his mind. Matthew McCrane is on now for a field goal attempt. 38 yards. This is his longest attempt this season. He's a freshman. Made a 30 yarder and a 19 yarder in the first half. And this one is perfect. McCrane three of three, and Kansas State extends its lead to 16 to nothing. Still a two possession game, but Texas would need two touchdowns and two at two point conversions. Right now, they got zip. McCrane buries the field goal from 38. State looks like a much different team the last month. The Buckeyes are rolling on offense with JT Barrett at quarterback. They play at Penn State tonight, Saturday Night Football, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Kansas State on top of Texas, 16 0. They're not doing bad on the defensive side either. You got Joey Bosa. He's playing pretty well. Buckeyes still have Michigan State on the road and then Michigan at home. Kansas State with a tough schedule at Oklahoma State and West Virginia up next on ESPN. Those two teams along with Baylor three and one. A half game behind Kansas State entering today the Wildcats the only unbeaten left in their conference. Their only loss overall was against Auburn. Here they get a good return out to the 39 yard line by Bernard. Let's bring in now ESPN's National Director of Recruiting and our very own Tom Luganville. Well, guys, when it comes to building a program like Kansas State, one of the disadvantages for Kansas State is they don't necessarily have a plentiful, talent-rich player pool to draw from both in the state of Kansas and the surrounding states. One of the ways they counter that, and one of the things they do have, is very prominent junior college football from within the state, and it's junior college football that does afford the opportunity for scholarships. So what that allows Coach Bill Snyder and his staff to do is not only an evaluate and monitor players coming out of high school, in the state of Kansas but then if they're not ready and they need to develop and they need to continue to move on they can put them off into the junior college ranks and get them on the back end and, and hopefully have a player with a red shirt year and still have two years of eligibility now the emphasis in the state of Kansas for junior college football is that you have a 63 man roster and no more than 20 of those players can be from out of state so they want to develop in state talent that helps programs like Kansas State so between walk ons and getting that upper classman that's a little older a little bit more mature that you've been able to track from high school ranks all the way through to the junior college level it gives Kansas State tremendous advantages right now on their two deep guys 12 players out of the junior college ranks for Kansas State and, and Tom you were saying a little earlier yesterday that Kansas is one of the only states with California maybe Mississippi that that has the Juco farm system right yeah and that is really prominent where you have good competitive football no doubt it's interesting by the way, Roger Bernard was shaking up the kick returner as they pitch it again to Foreman. And he gets a couple yards. So the next play after they fumble on a pitch, ran it on a reverse by a true freshman, they pitch it to another true freshman, Amani Foreman. It really is fascinating to listen to, to, to that and how how Bill Snyder has built this program. Because you wonder, these, these programs, Oklahoma, Texas, TC, they come in and, and they're not blowing out this team Kansas State consistently I mean they've been they've had all kinds of success against programs like Texas and how they continue to do it is really really interesting from a Juco and a walk on standpoint second down and nine and nowhere to go on the ground Jonathan Gray will lose yardage so it'll be third down and long now their leading tackler Kansas State gentleman Truman he's a walk on Brian Mueller who was an All-American last year as a pass rusher he's a walk on BJ Finney who uh, the Texas coaches said might be the best center of the Big 12. Uh, he's a walk on as well and Finney making his 46th consecutive start. Yeah and it's not like these these players are, are role players they are centerpieces of this program captains.
swoops on third down and long, and he finds Marcus Johnson has been quiet today, but a big catch there to midfield and a 21-yard gain. Well, this is probably the best throw we've seen today from Tyrone Swoops. He's throwing a little bench route over the corner. So he's got to get over the corner, McDaniel, in front of the safety, Schellenberger. Going to run in and break to the outside. This ball's got to be thrown on time to the outside, and that'll build a little confidence in Tyrone Swoops. First catch for Johnson, 20th on the year. But they got to this point on the last possession and turned it over. A minute to go in the third. Here's Gray into the pile. Nowhere to go again. Kansas State winning at the point of attack. Mueller was there along with Clink Scales, who hasn't played a whole lot this year, but he was in the backfield there, second and long. And it's not like Kansas State doesn't turn players out in the NFL either. And they've had guys who've come here as walk-ons or as lightly recruited players that go on and play in the National Football League. Yeah, absolutely. Tyrone Swoops at some point is going to have to start running with his legs. That was a keep look there, a pull look on the zone read. He's going to have to win this game with his legs. Blitz coming, using his arm here, and Shipley with a catch. Fell to the ground at the 35, but 15 yards and a first down. Swoops with a nice toss that time. Trap getting that ball out on time. You're going to see the center, Doyle, gets beat by Travis. Britz there on the inside, but gets rid of the football on time to Jackson Shipley for a big first down. A lot of raw talent with Tyrone Swoops at 6'4", 243, a sophomore, 800 yards of total offense the last two weeks. He's going to run it here at the 30-yard line and knock down inside the 25. There you go, starting to run him some, and they're in business here inside the 25-yard line. But they trail 16 to nothing as we head to the fourth quarter. Kansas State looking to keep its hopes of a playoff spot, Big 12 championship alive. ESPN is your home of the new college football playoff. It's been 10 years since the Texas Longhorns were shut out, and they're in danger of that happening today. Down 16 to nothing. They punted on all of their possessions in the first half. Kansas State with 221 yards of total offense, dominating time of possession and getting three field goals from Matthew McCrane. Texas, though, in position now at the 23 of Kansas State. They're going to run the ball with Gray inside the 20-yard line. A gain of five to the 18. Will Davis made the tackle. Let's see if we see more of that and also the quarterback run game. Swoops has only carried it six times, but he's hard to bring down. 245 pounds. Play fake. Swoops rolling out. Throws. And the catch made by Swain. Forward progress should be to about the 15. Schellenberg with good coverage that time. Let's see where they spot the ball. Actually, forward progress yeah, to the 15-yard line, so he's short, third down. This is a situation. Charlie Strong, Sean Watson. Get Tyrone Swoops on the edge. Two yards is all you need. And with that size, pretty sure he can get it. Let's fall forward for two yards. He's bigger than some of the D linemen for Kansas State. Third and two. They hand off, and Greg Sky is trying to get the first down. I think he's going to be short. Texas will have to go for it. Fourth down, they did not get it. Tyrone Swoops keeps that ball in his own read. He might walk into the end zone. He only had Ryan Mueller was the only guy left. Take a look. Here's Mueller. He's the one that's responsible. If Tyrone Swoops keeps that, he's going to have that first down easy. He's got to be more aggressive with his feet and that making that read in the zone read position to use his size. That's on him, not on the coach. Yeah, well, you got to keep it. Fourth down in a yard. Texas still in the huddle, and Charlie Strong will have to call a timeout. So two timeouts left for the Longhorns and a big fourth and one coming up. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup heads to the first race in the Eliminator round. NASCAR chase for the Sprint Cup at Martinsville presented by AutoZone Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Fourth down, Texas down 16 points. 
It's been dominated. Time of possessions. So Charlie Strong knows the possessions are limited. They need to take their chances here. Try to pick up a yard. Gray dives and spins. And they're going to mark him short. Oh. He's short of the first down. It'll be Kansas State ball as Texas turns it over on down. Megan's going to take a look at this. He spun. It looked like he spun and maybe got the first down. The but was his knee down? Is that the runner was short of the line to gain? The ball will go over on down. Now let's see. He's on a teammate right there, which means he's not down unless. And well, we can't see the, the the legs though. His legs were not down either. You can see him there. His hand was down. Take a look from this angle. You're right. He was on top of a teammate. Neither knee were, was down. His hand the goes down. The on the field was that the runner was short of the line to gain. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, I don't know. That, that doesn't look like a good spot. No. But the problem is that the ruling on the field is he's well, short. So you got to have yeah. indisputable video evidence. I'm not sure we have it with the looks. Well, the elbow goes down there. When the elbow goes down, that's the first point at which he's down. But that ball's already extended. They have spotted the ball on the 14-yard line. He's way past the 14-yard line. Right there, he's close. Yeah. And the, the elbow is down. The question is, are the legs down? We saw from the other angle, the legs were not down. The ball's past it. I mean, it's it's on the... But look where the official is, Finally gets to the 13-yard line. I think that's a, ter that's a terrible spot. I mean, that's... The knees were not down. We saw from the other side. That official was right there, too. There he was. But take a look. Take a look at the knees. So we can see that the knees are not down. He is on top of another player. There's the knees. Not down, not down. His hand goes down, and that's where the elbow goes. His knees never reach the yeah. ground. You see that? That should be a first down. That should be a first down. At least, at least a better spot and a measurement. But to, to mark the ball on the 14-yard line, that was that's egregious. I mean, there, there the hand, is, and then comes the forearm. Not until he's that, still on yep. top of a player. Now he's down. Once that yep. elbow hits, he's down. And if nothing else, they should measure. It <clears throat> looks like he's got it from that view. The hard part now is you got to respot it. And then measure, but it takes this is going to take a little while, and that's probably why they're still talking on the headset as to exactly where that should be spotted. But I think to your point, the, the call on the field, I mean, the guy is right there. And well, you see the defender's legs or the offensive player's legs on another player, and you're looking, that's your job, to look right there. Well, just because he's in position to see it doesn't mean he made the right call. He can make an error, and it, it's pretty clear from... That's why we have replay to make these clean these things up. But just wonder if they will feel that there's enough video evidence to overturn it. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Yeah, that's, 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 that's unfortunate. That's the problem when a mistake is made on the field. And you just don't have enough video to support overturning it when it looks like we could say up here, yeah, we think he got it, but it's not 100%. They're not going to overturn it. It's almost like in the courtroom, beyond a reasonable doubt. But you can see that the knees are never hit the ground, and the elbow. The problem is when the elbow hit the ground, you didn't have a definitive look as to where it should have been spotted. Maybe but, that's maybe that's what they. But it wasn't the 14-yard line. They should have said sure. that the ruling of it was overturned. He's not down at the 14. And then you go and put the ball where replay says he's down, and then measure. They swing it out. Lockett breaks a tackle at the 30-yard line. Up past the 35 before he's banged out of play at the 37, a 23-yard gain. Jason Hall got Lockett out of bounds. Now it's only a matter of time before they start getting the ball in Tyler Lockett's hands, and he's been so good in these scenarios. That that's Haynes, the, the safety, Dylan Haynes, who's been playing the last couple of weeks when Jason Hall was out injured, and he's got to get Tyler Lockett on the ground there to prevent that, that play. And you wonder how tired this defense has been. Been on the field for 30 minutes. Waters throws incomplete. Cedric Reed in the back of Ridgeway, rather in the backfield, may have gotten a, a piece of that pass. And so, second down and 10. Well, you remember last week, Texas in the Iowa State game, their defense 
They were on the field quite a bit. They gave up a bunch of points, but it was for the first time in a long time the offense picked up the defense. They outscored a team rather than having to win a game with only 20, 25 points. And this, this Texas defense has played well enough to win here in this game. It's just the offense has done absolutely nothing. 48 points last week, and again, they have not been shut out since the Oklahoma game in 2004. Waters eluding pressure. And again, Lockett coming back for the ball makes the catch is short of the first down. Third down coming up. Two and a half into the fourth, and Kansas State leading 16 0. Again, putting a lot of pressure on Texas, which spent most of the day on defense to make a stop here when they have to. In a lot of games, you'd say, well, if they can only get a turnover, but you just don't expect that to happen. Kansas State making a mistake in this situation. And Waters has Burton for the first down inside the Texas 40. Great pickup in the backfield. They brought the blitz. I think it was Demarcus Robinson, the back, who picks up the linebacker. And that gets the, the receiver Burton open. It's great, great release here. You get man-to-man -man coverage, and you stack cross-release. That gets one on one with with Haynes and easy conversion for Kansas State. Play clock down to four. Waters checking out of a play. It's down to one. Another pass play as Waters makes a dangerous throw. Burton did a good job to keep Duke Thomas from picking it off. They're continuing to let Waters sling it here, not content with a 16-point lead. Well, that's very interesting, Dave, that you say that, because you would think, you know, Bill Snyder and that conservative approach up two scores in the fourth quarter, they just want to run the clock. But he trusts Jake Waters in this passing game. We saw it last week, not just playing not to lose the game against Oklahoma, but throwing the ball on a big third down late in the game. I think they trust Jake Waters in any situation to make the right decision and protect the team in the fourth quarter. Think about it. They've had the lead, obviously, 13-0 at halftime. He's thrown the ball now 18 times in the second half and going to fire deep, and it's in traffic and incomplete. Again, it was broken up by the offensive player. This time, Lockett, Duke Thomas, who has three picks. At some point, you got to catch the ball. you got to make a play, yeah. get your offense back out there. Well, they, he almost picked off right the last slant. And so what do they do now? They run deep and try to chart, throw the ball deep on him. They, they got him earlier in the first half on the slant and go, but Duke Thomas up to the challenge there, no bite. So again, no time coming off the clock because of the back-to-back -back incompletions. And a big third down here. Kansas State around 50% on third down. That's been their percentage all year. Another pass play, Waters with time, and a breakdown defensively. It's Lockett getting the first down, and that's just inexcusable if you're Texas. And it's happened five or six times on third down and long that there's receivers running free in the middle of the field. Well, you're, you're bringing a receiver on a drag route all the way from the other side of the field, and this is not Duke Thomas. This is a breakdown on the strong side of the field. Quandre Diggs, a nickelback, has to get his eyes turned around and see that the shallow cross is coming to his side of the field and make a play. That's, that's just bad football there. And again, think of all the third and long situations Kansas State has picked up today to keep the sticks moving. Now they'll run it with Jones, and he's inside the 15. Pinballs forward past the 10. A 14-yard gain to the 9-yard line. We saw Jones get a little banged up in the first half, a knee. Good to see him back in this game. And Kansas State threw the ball five or six times to start this drive. And then you come back with the power running game with Jones and Texas defensively is on their heels again. First and goal for K-State. Wildcats still running their offense. Waters audibling. Here's Jones. Cuts it back. Gets to the two. Second and goal. Next snap will come inside. Ten minutes remaining. Hassan Ridgeway made the stop. Slow to get up. He's got to be exhausted. He's played some 60 snaps on defense today. 
K-State has run 63 plays, and I haven't counted, but I know he's close to playing every one of them. Yep. Both he and Malcolm Brown. Second and goal. It's Jones again, slips a tackle, and scores! Touchdown, Kansas State. Now we've been talking about the mistakes made by Texas, but Kansas State, pretty good football team, as they have shown again today. On both sides of the football, as they look to get to 6-1 and one and 4-0 and oh in the Big 12 and get to career victory number 500 for the program. No one ever thought that would have been possible back in the 80s that this program would win 500 games. Now they're 9-31 away from doing that. Extra point makes it 23 to nothing. And what consistently jumps out when you see this Kansas State team is they're all hungry. They're not the most highly recruited, but they will fight on every single snap. And they have broken down the will of the Texas Longhorns. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Now one of the key stories of the game, Kansas State on third down and long. Now the Wildcats have converted four out of nine on third and eight plus. They came in number eight in the country in third down conversions. And look at Jake Waters' numbers on third down passing the football. He's had a great day despite that injured right shoulder. Does not appear to be a factor. They keep playing that last drive on third and ten, a 16-yard pass to lock it. And Texas in trouble now with nine and a half left down 23 nothing. And Foreman tripped up. Great special teams play back inside the 10. Texas will have to start shy of its 20 yard line. Colborne Couchman made the nice special team stop as he was getting blocked. And so Texas football. Kansas State hosts Oklahoma State next week, then goes to TCU. They also have to play at West Virginia and at Baylor. But you see the hunger continuing on special teams with uh, the great tackle there. Not. Well, Jerry Kill and that program has done such a good job of those players. Kansas State is not shut out. An opponent in conference play since 2003, and they lead 23 0. Swoops on the run, able to break a tackle and get back near the line of scrimmage. Ryan Mueller made the hit. Texas, as we mentioned, it's been 10 years since the Longhorns were shut out. 2004, they lost to Oklahoma 12 0. Texas in danger of falling to 3 and 5. And obviously, look, this is a rebuilding effort for Charlie Strong, but you were so encouraged if you're a Texas fan by the last two weeks. Is this a step back, or is this just what just, you should come to expect this year? I think it's going to be up and down. I mean, that's that's the way that this season is, is kind of gone, and I expect it to continue to go that way. Certainly last week against Iowa State was, was a step in the right direction offensively because of the confidence and the playmaking ability that you start to see from Tyrone Swoops and John Harris. I'm not so sure that, that Charlie Strong is, is sold completely on Tyrone Swoops as a quarterback of the future. Uh, I think he wants to see more from him, and, and obviously you come in on the road against a good team and a good defense in Kansas State, and so far you've got a bagel on the board. That's, that's certainly not going to cut it. Here comes pressure off the edge, and Swoops does a good job to get away from Mueller, trying to run for the first down, and he won't make it. It's fourth down. Well, the other options aren't good for Texas, a quarterback right now. Remember, David Ash decided to retire because of concussions after one game. He's thinking about playing baseball, and then you got Gerard Hurd, a true freshman from Denton, Texas. They're trying to redshirt him. Texas is going to punt the football here, fourth down and three. But, and again, it's not on the quarterback. You know, it, this is a this is a, a systemic issue with the offensive line, yep. and and having you know those suspensions, defections, uh, and then injuries. Dominic Espinosa, probably the, the main one that really has derailed this offense this year. 
The nine players dismissed, 12 in all, suspended by Charlie Strong. Lock it on the return. He's loose. Past the 40 yard line, so K State will have good field position. Midway through the fourth quarter, leading Texas 23 to nothing. At Kansas State showing why it is a contender for a playoff spot. Running the football against Texas with Demarcus Robinson getting a touchdown. Charles Jones with a touchdown run. Kansas State has held the ball for over 32 minutes in this game. Three field goals from Matthew McCrane and the Wildcats on top 23 to nothing. Texas with seven punts, six of those in the first half. A fumble, turnover on downs. And we talked about the time of possession dominated by the Wildcats. K-State looking to go 4-0 in the Big 12 with Oklahoma State here in Manhattan next week. See if the Wildcats just keep it on the ground here and try to run off the clock. Waters has thrown it more in the second half than he did in the first. He will run the football here. Robinson being chased down from behind. Caleb Blewett on the tackle. Our Northwestern Mutual AP rankings. Mississippi State of Kentucky. Got the games tonight on ESPN, ESPN2 in the SEC, and Michigan, Michigan State 330 on ABC. Well, if you're a Kansas State fan, you're just right behind TCU there at 11, and you think about the remainder of the year. There's plenty of opportunity, right? But three out of four weeks, you're going to be on the road against three of the top ten, top teams in the Big 12 and TCU, West Virginia, and Baylor. So uh, it's going to be a tough stretch. You've, you've taken care of two blue bloods though in Oklahoma and Texas so far. We try to run the ball here on second down and nothing for Robinson. And again, it's not going to be the AP rankings that matter as of next week. It'll be the college football playoff rankings, which will be unveiled Tuesday. First time the selection committee will unveil its top 25. Be interesting to see where Kansas State is there. If right, there aren't upsets right. today, yep. where does the where do they rank Kansas State? You know, a lot of them watched that Auburn game, which was well, very hope, close. You hope they watched it, and you hope they remember it. And the fact that Kansas State left 20 points on the board in the first half of that game, and they only lost by six. That's the last time that Waters had an interception. No picks in four games after throwing two against the Tigers. Third and 13, it's Cody Cook with the tackle. He's short of the marker, so Kansas State will punt the ball. Cedric Reed had pressure that time on Jake Waters. Yeah, big hit here on Jake Waters. This is not what you want to do with your quarterback, you know, with a sore shoulder. Man, throwing that ball and hitting your arm. I think last drive I understand you want to you know put the game away throw the ball get another touchdown but now you're up 23 to nothing there's no reason to be throwing the ball with six minutes left in the game and a quarterback with a bum shoulder that makes no sense you now waters clearly was shaken up last week driven to the ground against Oklahoma had to lead the game came back on and played was not 100 percent this week though is that punt Oh, took a bounce and went into the end zone. Looked like it was going to go out of bounds, but it's a touchback. Check in with Reese in the studio. Dave, in the early part of the day, there have been some really good individual performances, but the Goodyear superior performance comes from Amir Abdullah of Nebraska. 225 yard rushing against Rutgers on today's added 90 in kickoff returns, 26 in reception, set a school record. So far, with 341 all-purpose yards on the day, Huskers are rolling. Man, there's some great backs in college football yeah. this year. And he's one of them. And you think about it, you didn't ever be drafted in the first round last year. I think it would be a little different. In I don't know. 2015, or do you just think that's the trend now? I think, well, I think it's, it's more than a trend. I think it's the norm now. I, it's going to be hard unless you have just a phenomenal back like a Todd Gurley. I love Amir Abdullah. He's just not big enough to be a first-round draft pick, but he'll definitely help somebody's team. Melvin Gordon, don't think he'll go in the first round. As Gray is taken out of bounds. McDaniel on the tackle. I don't. I think Todd Gurley's no-brainer first yeah. first rounder. All right, let's look at the what is now the uh, selection committee. It's down at 12 with uh, Archie Manning's health. The top four at the end of the season in the semifinals. And we'll have the uh, college football playoff rankings show debut on ESPN 730 Eastern 
on Tuesday. The final selection made Sunday, December 7th, 1245 Eastern before the NFL game. Swoops going to throw deep, and he overshot his intended receiver, Marcus Johnson. It'd be really interesting to see if the first rankings by the committee, how similar they are to the polls. They have right. said all along that they're going to pay no attention to the polls. Well, yeah, but I think, it, I mean, in fairness to them, too, um, you know, the AP polls, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, you gotta, you got to give the AP and the, and the credit. If it comes out and they're really close, you can't say, oh, well, they were looking at the polls. I mean, maybe they just, maybe they're both kind of accurate and right. How do you not look at the polls? I mean, you can't watch yeah, every game and sit there and break down yeah, the film. you can't not look at the polls. And I, I don't think, I just think that the polls shouldn't influence where you put a team. You can certainly look at it. Another dropped interception by Dante Barnett. He's had several of those. Tommy? Well, you know, the one thing, too, that we just don't know yet are some of these games going down the stretch here, particularly some games in the SEC that are going to involve Auburn, Alabama, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State, and how that's going to shake things up in terms of strength of schedule. Uh, what we have is a sample, and it's given the committee an opportunity now to get a feel for who is who, where injuries are, how scheduling is laid out to this point. But I still think it's really premature for us to sit here and say that this thing's going to look overly similar four or five weeks from now as opposed to what it's going to be Tuesday when they release the first set of rankings. There is a lot of football to be played and a lot of cloudiness, guys, I, see, I think still to come before it starts to clear itself up. Well, Tom, you know, you look at this week, and, and I know you guys have to make predictions on who the uh, – who the final four is today obviously it, it's going to change a ton over the yeah. next uh, month but you know you have three sec teams uh, this week but of course mississippi state hasn't played alabama yet auburn alabama haven't played mississippi mississippi state haven't played right. is, is there going to be an undefeated team left in florida state came close can miami beat florida state can louisville beat florida yeah. state or, or the louisville, Seminole's gonna louisville on thursday is going to give them all they can handle but i think it's like anything else thank goodness we waited till the end of october to come out with with the first college football playoff committee poll or rankings uh and and thank goodness that you know we have some time left for them to get some reps on actually putting these things together it's like it's like anything else they need to work together and figure out how this process is going to work, the strength of schedules, how they're going to interact in the room together. So I, I think in the first year anyway, this was the right time and the right mix for them to start to get into the process of, of putting these rankings together. A new quarterback for Kansas State. We wondered if we might see this guy um, earlier in the game, Joe Huebner, but Jake Waters, despite the injury, played through it. Huebner, a former walk-on who's thrown just six passes this year, has not played in a month. Jake Waters done for the day. Another very solid performance by Waters inside four minutes to go. Hubner, pretty big guy, 6'4", 200 pounds, brought down after he got the first down. You know, guys, I think another thing to look at is I'm curious to know how certain members of the committee are going to come up with their plan, their strategy, their look, uh, how they're evaluating things, what they place value in, what they don't. I think, you know, having a coaching background and and then kind of getting a feel and seeing how maybe a Barry Alvarez or a Tyrone Willingham will approach this in relationship to maybe how a Mike Trangese will approach it. That's going to be very interesting to watch unfold when it comes to determining who's the best team, identifying strengths, weaknesses, where you place premium value in your particular set of criteria and coming up with not only the top four teams, they got to come up with top 25. Huebner brought down to the 40. That, that, that's an interesting point you make, Tom, because everybody's focusing on the top four, but the teams that they rank in the top 15 right now, you know, they're going to creep up in those polls as teams lose, and you may have a team ranked 15th now that later in the year you put in the final four. That's why this first ranking is important. Well, and for the for that committee, they better they better know the top 30 teams really well, right? I mean, because, you know, the team that's at 28 now could win out the rest, and they, they need to be in that poll, so... It's not like they're just worried about four teams. It's about 30 teams that they really need to know inside now. K-State just trying to run the clock out here as Huebner gets another first down. It looks like Texas is going to get shut out for the first time in 10 years. And again, if you're Charlie Strong, you got to be disappointed after the last two weeks. The way your offense played against Oklahoma. Oklahoma had a pick six and a kick return for a touchdown. Otherwise, they maybe don't even beat Texas. The Longhorns come back. 
48 points against Iowa State, but their offense wasn't on the field enough today to ever really get in a rhythm. They've had the ball for just over 20 minutes. I think the only remaining question going forward for Kansas State, will they have enough firepower when they get up against teams like TCU and Baylor? And, and that uh, certainly those games will be a lot of fun to watch. Huebner brought down after a gain of nine by Michael Thompson. Well, big one tonight that certainly will impact the first college football playoff rankings with Ole Miss visiting LSU and ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, 715 Eastern on ESPN. Uh, Ole Miss has been great. We saw Mississippi State go down there and beat LSU. Right. Think it happens again? I do. I do. And I think Bo Wallace, everybody's waiting for the other shoe to drop with Bo Wallace. I think he continues to play well. Uh, you know, he has been outstanding in the second half of games all year. He's thrown 10 touchdowns and, and no interceptions. And he's protected the ball in the last three games when they've beaten Alabama and Tennessee. There's Jones brought down the 25-yard line. Texas will not call timeout, just going to let the clock bleed. And Kansas State will improve to 6 and 1. It will go to 4 0 for the second time in three years. Remember in 2012, they won 11 games. They were undefeated till late in the year and ended up going to the Fiesta Bowl that season. Texas, meanwhile, will drop to 3 and 5 and 2 and 3 in conference play. Charlie Strong, you know, he's set a pretty clear path with his core values and drawing that line in the sand and, and finding out who wants to be a part of this program and they knew it was going to be structurally re rebuilding here but this is a tough way to go out on the road in Manhattan. Huebner trying to stay in bounds. It's hammered inside the 10. Clock will start when they reset the ball and see if they just take a knee or if they let Huebner try to get into the end zone here. All right, his teammates won't let him forget that one. You had a chance to get in the end zone on your one run of the day, and I think they're going to let this run out. But Jake Waters, a valiant effort, you know, playing through pain, and he continues to build his legacy here at Kansas State. Following a guy by the name of Colin Klein, you know you got to be tough. And this crowd and this Wildcat faithful appreciate the toughness that Jake Waters showed in this game. Kansas State remains the only unbeaten team in the Big 12 in conference games after shutting out Texas 23 to nothing. K-State 6-1 overall, the lone loss at home against Auburn. Be interesting to see where the committee ranks Kansas State on Tuesday night. They've beaten Oklahoma on the road. They've beaten Auburn at home. They've shut out Texas. And, you know, it all kind of started with a come-from-behind win at Iowa State. That's when Bill Snyder said Jake Waters really became a vocal leader mm -hmm. when he had a big run on the final drive. They were trailing in that game in Ames. They won that one, came back, and just made mistakes against Auburn. But Waters has not thrown a pick since that Auburn game on a Thursday night in mid-September. Well, I don't think there's any question. They should be right around the 10th-ranked team in the country. And if they're able to beat West Virginia or TCU, uh, they'll be right within striking distance of that final four come end of November. Those games are on the road. They also have Baylor on the road. A tough schedule. It's always tough, but even more so this year when you look at a team like West Virginia, which has been a surprise. They have a great player in Kevin White. They play Oklahoma State up next here on ESPN. And the toughness of Jake Waters, a, a big part of why Kansas State won today, 23 zip. The coach is with Tom. Coach, just one turnover in conference play, no turnovers two weeks in a row. How part are you of the execution of your football team here as you're heading down the stretch? Well, execution and turnovers are two different things sometimes. Right. And I'm not too happy with the offensive execution that we had. Uh, but I'm awful proud of our guys for maintaining possession of the ball, not making those mistakes. But we got penalties that were major, major penalties in the ball game that cost us gargantuan plays. You know, we probably took 14 points off the board with penalties. All right, Coach, good luck next week. Good luck to rest of the way. Thank you very much. Prior to his arrival, Tom, they averaged three wins a year. Since he came on as the head coach, they've averaged almost eight wins per season. And they've got six now in 2014 after beating Texas 23-0. College football scoreboard presented by Honda coming up next. So long from Manhattan.